Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are we doing? Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you tuned in. Today I'm joined by my good friend, Dale Nichols from the Midlands, at Dale the Great X on Twitter, following, this is one of our cores, he's one of my, one of my pals. How are we doing, Dale? What's happening? How you doing, Russ? You all right? I'm all right, mate. I love Monday mornings. It's yeah, it's been a, week. a it's been a rough month for boxing, isn't it? It's been a rough old month. Terrible, mate. Terrible. What do you think? I've been stewing this up for a few weeks now, um, and where else do we start? I think the big talking point from boxing in the month of October would be yet again incompetence from the British Boxing Board of Control and headed up by the main man himself, Fat Terry O. Fucking Connor. What the fuck was that scorecard? It's as simple as that. As Mr. Tony Bell, you would say, what is that scorecard? 117-111, and it's been signed off by the board. We are satisfied with the outcome of Mr. Terry O'Connor's opinion of the fight. Three rounds to Miguel Vasquez. Three rounds. That's an insult. And the thing is, the worst thing about it is that there was, only, there was another judge, was it Marcus McDonnell, that there was only two rounds away from him who also had written winning the fight. That doesn't seem to be getting mentioned. Why wasn't he also pulled before, before the board? In my opinion... The 116-113 card to Vasquez was the bare minimum that should have been given in that fight. Even that was a, was a little bit insulting. To give it eight rounds to five, he's obviously give a shared round in there to get to 116-113. That is oh, just like about acceptable. I'm not sure which judge had it 116-113. That was in the Vasquez fight. That was in the Vasquez fight, yeah. There was I a judge that... Could have been. I, 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 I enjoyed those. Went for, went for Ritson. O'Connor went for Ritson. McDonald went for Vasquez. So that 116-113 card for but Vasquez. Was it, what, what, one, was it two, two points? I can't but, remember, but what I want to do, what I want to do say is what fight has slid under the radar is Thomas Asamba's victory over Thomas Ward. That's gone under the radar, hasn't it? In my it has, it has. And, and Terry O'Connor was seven rounds out from Marcus McDonald's card. Now, I might be wrong here, but I don't think I am. You have grounds for appeal across the board of all sanctioning bodies, the board, and then you've got all the, the WBO, IBF, and all that. All them. Grounds for appeal is when two judges are four rounds apart. O'Connor and McDonald are nine rounds apart on one card. And Ward, a somber, a, Co a Connor, a Connor, and McDonald in a ten-round fight are seven rounds apart. So, is a somber's team going to appeal, and is Vasquez's team going to appeal? Oh, I, I think. Happen. Just, just to jump in, I, I, I think that what what's actually gone on here. O'Connor wasn't on his phone. We'd, you know, I know it sounds quite bad, but we'd love it to be true because there's no coming back from that if he yeah. was on his phone. But he wasn't on his phone. Um, I've looked at the footage myself and I think it's pretty conclusive that he was looking at his card. Yeah. But I think what's going on here is I think he's looking at his card for one reason and one reason only. He's checking what round is the fight is because there can only be one answer to that. He's already got a predetermined conclusion of how the fight's going to pan out and how he's going to score it in his mind. It doesn't really matter what's going to go on in the ring. Only knockdowns are going to affect that, the scoring. Ritson's winning that fight on his card and he doesn't give a shit. He's checking what round it is. It is actual. That's what it is, mate, what's going on. O'Connor's been at it for years. He's been at it for years. There's been stuff coming around on Twitter of some dodgy scores that he's put in over the years. You know, Huey Fury, Joseph Parker, Jack Arnfield, John Ryder. Obviously, the, the Nathan Cleverly carrying, carrying him back to the corner when he'd actually jumped in to stop the fight and they let it go on. The, the guy is washed up. He's fat. He's out of shape. He's 
not even competent anymore. Ian John Lewis is exactly the same. They both need to go. I refer back to a fight on BT a couple of weeks ago. Now, Nathan Gorman against Richard Larty is an example that I'm going to use here. Both Ian John Lewis and Terry O'Connor scored that 100 to 90 to Nathan Gorman. I have no problem that Nathan Gorman won that fight. Me, myself, I wouldn't class myself as a fantastic scorer of a fight, but I know what I'm looking at. I had that seven rounds to three for Gorman. Larty clearly won at least two or three rounds of that. But the 100 and the 90 scorecards by both them guys were, were obviously just filled in and then let's just sit there for half an hour, feet up, don't even have to watch what's going on in the ring because, let's be honest, we're not even going to give the away fight at a fair shake. And that is what's happening here. The UK has now become the worst place in the world to come for an away fighter. You know why? Because this is where it's happening now at boxing, but it's not boxing now. It's turning into a bit of a pantomime, isn't it? It's going down the route of WWE. It, it, it's pro, profiles go ahead of talent. Yeah. Fucking Love Island fighters popping up on shows. And fucking women, women who are getting world title shots just because they, they look good on Instagram. It's a fucking piss tight now, Porky. It's a fucking piss tight now. The sport that we grew up loving and fell in love with. I mean, fucking hell, Ali will be turning in his grave over this winner. Oh. And I, I speak to ex world champions all the time. And... Hmm. Yeah. You know what, right? It, if you look at, right, if you go back 10 years, right, look who people were fighting. Look now. Tyson Fury's not even had a defence of his belt yet. And if he does have a defence, it'll be in December and it'll be, won't be anybody that's much cop, will it? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I've got that jotted down. We can come on to that later, I think, a little. Tyson Fury. We're getting um, back to Terry O'Connor. Uh, what's the answer, Dale? What do we do? What do we do? I've watched the murder on here. Well, I've watched the interviews with is it Gareth Morris, um, the the ex referee. I've watched a couple of interviews that he's done on here. Yeah, he's obviously spoken about a few things that have gone on behind the scenes. How, how the British Boxing Board of Control is an old boys' club. To be honest, there's there's there's, there's talk of. People, people coming into boxing like your Dana White and stuff like that, um, who potentially might come in and try and ruffle a few feathers. But it is just rotten to the core. All of it is rotten to the core. I don't know personally what the answer is. And if I did, perhaps I'd pitch it forward as a solution. But to be honest, it's in the worst place I think it's ever been. It is. TV companies are going to start backing away from it because yeah. the controversy that surrounds it, the way that pay-per-view has been abused, the, 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 the quality, the pool, the pool of talent, it's just not there anymore. You look at the 2008, 2012 Olympics, the 2016, did, what did we have? One medalist, was it Joe Joyce? No, we, uh, 2016, no, Boatsy won a, a bronze like everywhere. Yep. Yeah. So was it was that the only two? I think there was just them two, yeah. Who meddled. And obviously Boatsy's done nothing, has he, in the pro ranks in three I might, and be, half wrong years. On, I might be wrong on that, but it's only two you hear about. Jo, jo, Joe Joyce, you know, he's getting on, but he's still not he's not had a world title shot. So where is the next gen, so to speak? Well, we haven't had a next gen show this year, have we? Mm-hmm. Where is the next gen? Well, this is what I look at it like. There ain't no next gen. Conor Ben's just pulled out a Chris Jenkins fight, hasn't he? So, They're not going the traditional route anymore. No. English, British, Commonwealth, European, Eliminators, World. What they're doing is they're getting these trinket belts and getting themselves a ranking, right? And they're getting sponsors who are saying, well, if you get ranked in top 15 in one of organisations, We'll give you this much a month and blah de, blah but you've got to stay undefeated. And it's like Connor Ben, isn't it? It's sponsored by JD Sports, isn't it? He's gonna to want to protect that all while he's ranked. If you can pick up a good living as a, an undefeated fighter without taking any risks, you can be known as 
a boxer can't you with an undefeated record but sooner or later the fans will turn off and they won't want us to look at you for example if you've got a padded record fair enough Eddie Hearn has had his fair share of guys with padded records but there comes a time now where you've got to be fighting people once you get by 10 and 0 you can't be padded anymore now it used to be 20 and 0 then it would add to 15 and 0 now because of the pandemic you get to 10 and 0 you've got to be let off Willie Hutchinson He's got to fight someone now. They can't keep giving him stiffs. He's got, otherwise, TV aren't interested. The, 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 the backs are against the wall. I had some figures sent me yesterday, and I was shocked what fighters are earning now. They're earning less than they were 20 years ago. Fighters are getting paid less now than 20 years ago. And now we've got this pandemic, they're on even less. So people have got to step up to the plate. Can't keep I mean, having skin. That's why Joe Joyce and Dubai are fighting. Got to step up. I mean, for me, I, I hold the British title as I know it's not the traditional way, but I hold it. I I have it as the highest regarding belt because the Commonwealth and the European most of the time are usually vacant belts than they're fought for. You can pretty much put anybody into those fights. You can go and pluck an opponent from anywhere and pull them in, and they can usually be pretty dog shit. You know, Dave Allen got a Commonwealth shot against Lenroy Thomas. Look what Joe Joyce did to Len Lenroy Thomas. European title fights, you know, most of the time, it's always for a vacant belt. But usually, for a British title, there's usually a live, active champion, and it's always a competitive fight. If you're stepping up to fight for a British title, usually it won't be some knockover job. And it's a good quality fight. No. And for me, you're more likely to get something out of a British title fight than you are fighting for a vacant European or a Commonwealth these days. Yeah. But they don't seem to go to the traditional route. Like you're saying, they'll go pick up a WA, WBA Continental or a WBO European and they'll get themselves in, inside the top 15, top 10, have a couple of defences of that against a couple of bums. And before you know it, they're knocking on the door for a world title shot or a regular belt or an interim belt. And then before you know it, we're talking a thousand days mandatory. How, how many WBA trinket belts, WBO and all them intercontinental does Carl Frost got on his CV? None. He went the traditional route. English, British, outright, Commonwealth. I think he had about seven defences at Commonwealth. He won British outright. He learned his craft. The European guy, Sanabea, won't fight him. Then he, then he fought for WBC when Cal Zaghi vacated. Fought Pascal, an undefeated Olympian, who went on to win Ring Magazine at WBC at like everywhere. And beat Diacono and Chad Dawson, who took their O's. Carl Frotch learned his craft at British level. And what we've got now, fighters don't want to learn the craft at British level. They want to jump in with a trinket belt and sort of miss all them levels. They want to go, boom, then get found out. Get a trinket belt, then get found out. Instead of learning their crafts. Well, what, what, what I find quite telling here, actually, is the fighters, the, the live and active fighters in the British, of British talent now, that have gone the traditional route of English, British, Commonwealth, European, world champion. I think the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head is Tyson Fury, uh, Josh Warrington, Callum Smith and Josh Taylor. So of them four, three of them are Ring Magazine champions and the other one is a legit world champion. It's no coincidence, is it? You go through the levels, you learn your craft. Saunders. Saunders, oh, yeah. Saunders yeah. Well. yeah, good one. Uh, yeah, they've all learned the craft, but now that they've got to the promised land, they're not fighting the elites, are they? Tyson's fought Wilder, and it twice, and Vladimir, but he, and Joshua's sort of had handpicked ones, hasn't he, really? You think ah, he could sort of put him in these fighting top guys, the, the best that's around, but the others, apart from Joshua and Fury, who are really only pay per view fighters, out of the others, Callum Smith, Billy Joe. Warrington's done, done well, though, hasn't he? We have to give him credit, don't we? we don't I mean, go. he's fell into the right fights at the right time. Don't get me wrong. Like, Selby probably not at his natural weight. Frampton towards the end of his career. But let's not take anything away from him. He's still got the job done and he's still won the fights. But they're not fighting these elite. I want to see Josh Warrington 
fight somebody in America. I want to see him tested. I want to see him in a fight where he wins it and I can say, you know what? He's just beat an elite guy there. I'm going to put him in my top pound for pound 15. That's what I want to do with Josh Warrington, but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Do we? we can only surmise, can't we? You know what I mean, Dale? Because yeah. we are told and fed oh, we're treated like mushrooms, like what Bricktop Brick Top does to fighters. Keep them in dark and feed them shit. That's what. Yeah. Doing, well, you've you've got to think about the, you know there's plenty there's plenty of fighters out there that don't seem to be getting opportunities, as Joe Gallagher would say. You know, he, he, we've all seen his IFL interview, haven't we, last week, where. He's moaning about Callum Johnson. He's moaning about Beefy Smith. Um, it's saying Eddie Earns not giving them the opportunities, but I've told them this is how much money and these are the dates that we want and we'll sign up. But the way I see it is that the cult, the Bean Masons, whatever you want to call it, this little sky click, it's starting to crumble now for me. The people that you thought were on the inside are on the outside looking in. Dave Caldwell sticking one into Dave Allen on Twitter. Joe Gallagher. Dave Caldwell is into... still one into Dave Allen. Sky, yeah, Sky Sports tweeted, didn't they? Um, who can't wait to see this guy fight next week on the pay per view with Dave Allen or something like that? And Dave Caldwell just replied and just put no thanks. Oh, the Lenoy Thomas fight. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Um, obviously, Joe Gallagher going off on a rant. Spencer X has now jumped on the bandwagon as well. Um, <laughs> it's a sky I've been told you know the, these are the guys that have always been quite close to the circle they've, they've always obviously you know Dave Caldwell's got his Tony Bellew connection Joe Gallagher's obviously got all the Smith guys Paul Smith obviously you know but it's, it's Paul Smith had to as, dig at Dave Allen and Beefy Smith it's crumbling away now isn't it you know is it's coming I'm apart saying. at the seams now this, 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 this little cult this little clique and I think everyone He's starting to see through it all now. The bullshit is off the scale. Let me just tell you this. Look at how they're all turning. It's every man for themselves. Everybody were hanging out the back of Eddie Earn. Beefy Smith were hanging out the back of Eddie Earn. I've always wanted to come to Eddie. Not saying that now, are you, Beefy? Well, they're not, are they? Everybody's turning on each other. You know what it is? You know crocodiles? Let me tell you something about crocodiles. You know when there's no to eat? Do you know what they do? They eat, they eat each other. They're cannibals, aren't they? And this is what you're seeing now. This is what you're seeing now. And to be fair to Beefy Smith, he's a former world champion that's never beat a world champion. I don't get that. But to be fair to him, Beefy Smith, he, came, he went to Eddie's with all good intentions, but his best fight with Eddie in how long? How long has he been with Eddie? Is that Sam Eggington? Sam Eggington. You know what I mean? It's, uh, Sam Eggington's a British Commonwealth and European champion, but he's only yeah, really match him, Dragged him up to 154 as well. Dragged him yeah. up. He's only at match room, isn't he, Sam Eggington, because he's, he's Barry Earn's little pet project, isn't he? Well, you think back to Joe Gallagher anyway. I've got no sympathy for this guy. He's a tosser. You know, he's going on about Tasha Jonas. He's coming on about Tasha Jonas and then what she's putting in the gym. But let's wind the clock back a year, shall we? What did he say about John Ryder when he fought Callum Smith and he got robbed on the cards? He said it'll be next week's fish and chip paper. That's what he said. Fuck off asking me about... It'll be next week's fish and chip paper. Fuck off asking me about a rematch. Well, Joe, fuck off yourself. Well, what about when he had Crawler and Linares? Exactly. Oh, no, Paul he's Smith gone. against Arthur Abraham. Paul Smith against Arthur Abraham rematch as well. I, you know, there's been a couple of others along the way. But I'm not going to sit here and start feeling sorry for Joe Gallagher when he's been saying stuff like that on IFL for the past two, three, four years. Sticking it to the fans. Half the, off, off the arena were booing at that decision. That night when John Ryder beat, beat Callum Smith. Yeah, they were. They were. And he's saying he's got the cheek to say to the fans, fuck off asking me about a rematch. Yeah, no. I don't think anyone's going to sit there and feel sorry for you now, Joe. You've burnt your bridges. But coming back to the Terry O'Connor one from earlier as well, I mean, it's, boxing's that predictable now. I actually put a tweet out 
at half past two on the Saturday afternoon before the fight and just said that Luis Richon will win a dodgy decision tonight against Miguel Vasquez and it'll be with the assistance of Fat Terry Ori and John Lewis. How right was I? And that's just me. Yeah. It, it, it's starting to get out of control now. The, and it's disappointing. It's disappointing because we we kind of almost did have probably around about 2014 to 2000 and mid 2017, what we would call the golden era. We've seen some pain for pain greats on these shores. You know, we've had Usyk, we've had Spence, we've, we've had Vla- Vladimir, we've had, you know, there's been plenty of top quality. Lomachenko's been over here as well. Terence Crawford for Ricky Burns. We've we have had some pain for pain greats come over here in recent times. Not in oh. UA fought on a Josh Taylor card, didn't they? That in the Super Series. You could say, Dale, that uh, Eddie. But Ed- we we won't see that now, will we? With these cards. Can I ask someone? You could say that Eddie Earn peaked 2012 to 2017. Since then, it's Skid Row. Done Skid Row boxing last three years. Tell me a good pay per view in last three years. Tell me a good one. Joshua Vladimir. Since then, when have we had value for money? Well, I can I can quite quite quickly run through the list well, with then. you. Since Vladimir for Femi, what pay per views have we had? And I'll and I'll tell you if they're any good. Brook against Spence, Chief Support, Groves Chudinov. Brook against Spence was a good fight, I suppose. We could get that one, but yeah, we'll, we'll give that a pass. Brook against Spence. Mayweather McGregor. No, that's two, hey. that's two guys from another other countries. Joshua against Tackham. Shocking stoppage. No, it was twelve days notice replacement. No good. No. Joshua Parker. Referee spoiled fight, unification fight, spoiled it, and the, it, it, the fight was stinker, stinkinators. Bellew high two. Oh, held together by glue, Davy Day, Bellew swim, WBSS tournament, money fight, best mates really, but men out the eight each other. White Parker. Not for a world title, both of them not born in England. Joshua Pavetkin. Pavetkin, what was he, 38, 39 year old, an old man? A gimme fight. Bellew Usyk. Well, Bellew played it right, didn't he, getting himself into position for that, but at the time, who, who would he really beat? Nathan Cleverly and David A. And a Macabre. It was his pension fight, wasn't it? He got bladdered anyway, so I'm glad about that. White Chisora 2. White Chisora 2. Chisora, they were what, eight or nine losses and why? Two bought, not born in England and not for a world title. Just, that was a terrible pay per view, that was. Reese Bellotti was chief support. Fucking Reese Bellotti. Who was it? Which one was that? Against fucking Ryan Walsh. Was that on the white uh, Chisora? On the white Chis- Fucking Reece. Ryan Walsh, Reese Bellotti, weren't he? Um, moving on to 2019, then we've got Joshua Ruiz one. Joshua Ruiz one. That one in England, they went for money in New York. He got beat up. I thought that we will give that one because he, because Femi got knocked out. We'll say that was a good one. But they thought they were pulling a fast one, getting a fat kid, didn't they? And they got the fingers burnt, didn't they? Yeah, White versus Rivers. Two lads, not one from Colombia, one from Jamaica, not for in, not from England. Pay per view, no world title. And, he, and Dylan White said he didn't want to fight Otis because he couldn't speak English. Rivers couldn't even speak English either, so contributions were not pay-per-view. Plus, there were drug tests that got in and all of stuff. Stink. Yeah. It, 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 decent is fight towards end, but pay-per-view, no. Lomachenko Campbell. Not a chance, no. But Tyler versus... Lomachenko, you're going to have to pay it, aren't you, but... No. Taylor versus Progray. That they weren't any earned fighters. They pinched that fight off somebody else. But yeah, that were a good fight, that. But that wasn't an Eddie Earned fight, was it? No, Sowerland. Um KSI Logan Paul. Oh, 
No, definite no. Ruiz Joshua two. Went to Saudi because it were where all money was. Joshua stunk the place out, fighting on back foot, frightened to death. To death. Other bloke turned up fat as a pig Mitchell in man. And uh, White Pavetkin. White Pavetkin. No fans. Beyond close doors. Against White, and he, what, he knocked White out. He's shown where White's at. British level, and that's the White's best belt. British title. But would Dylan but White beat Joe Joyce or Dubois? It'd be a bloodbath, wouldn't it? Well, obviously then, so since June 2017, we've had three UK men's title fights on regular Sky and we've had 17 pay-per-views. Yeah. I've just read them all out there. Not good, is it? I mean, Hills, Hills doesn't even entertain the hardcore anymore. He doesn't go on any podcasts. He won't do any interviews that are uncomfortable for him. No. It, it, it's, it's out... It, He's just all interested about selling his book, hey, raising yeah, his profile. I mean, let's just look at the, at the fights he's putting on here now. He's got... He's wheeling out Gamboa for Haney, Rosado for Jacobs, and Martin Murray for Billy Joe Saunders. So, Rosado, Gamboa, and Martin Murray, there's 20 losses between them. That's an average of seven a fighter. How many more times is he going to do this? this Danny Jacobs. Enough. Danny Jacobs fights Canelo, and now he's fighting a guy with 12 losses. This is why, Dale, you're the voice of pay-per-view boxing. That's correct. I mean, Martin Murray, well, didn't even have a WBO ranking last month. He has this they've, month. They slipped him in at number 12, but he hasn't fought. This year. So how can Martin Murray get a WBO ranking at number 12 when he hasn't fought this year and it's November in a few days? I don't get that. And he's fighting for a world title. Look, I ain't got a problem, right, with Martin Murray fighting Billy Joe. If the belt's not on the line. Same as I ain't got a problem with Dave Allen fighting Christopher Lovejoy. But the problem, because they're both from probably similar level, maybe Dave shades it a bit, but the guys have got a world rank that Dave's after. So that's the problem I've got. He's 444 on box rec, but he's been slipped in at the WBA at number 15. So they've obviously got plans for Dave to have a massive pay-per-view fight, haven't they, this year or next year? I have a problem with this guy coming over with his number 15 ranking. Did you know he weighed 347 pounds yesterday, apparently, it said on social media. They were on Boxing Asylum, I've been told. 347 pounds, somebody said. And they sent me a, a, a clip of it from Asylum last night. That's 25 stone all but three pounds. I mean, what, what? And he's been fighting featherweights and guys with 18 losing records and four of them on the debuts and... How can he have a number 15 ranking with WBA? What is going on? He's uh, Didn't he beat, hasn't he fought a featherweight <coughs> as well? Well, keep talking. He's, he's fought a featherweight as well on his CV, this guy. A fucking heavyweight against a featherweight. Yeah. Not Absolutely good. scandalous is, is oh. what it is. It's scandalous. Well, you've, got, you've got high quality fights like Lomachenko against against Lopez, the Charlo doubleheader the other week. You got the Mexico card from Friday night. Between BT and Sky, none of them picked any of these cards up. Yet this weekend, we're being served up a guy with nine losses, who's not even a fucking journeyman anymore, couldn't even win a British title if he tried, headlining a pay-per-view with Dave Allen as chief support. We've got to pay £20 for that, yet for our subscription, we couldn't even get Lomachenko-Lopez. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to come to. The Lomachenko-Lopez, right? This is how I look at it. What a great fight. And how come Sky couldn't get that for us? But yet they could give us KSI Logan Paul, pay a pay-per-view. 
But yeah, they, they, they couldn't give us that. I mean, uh, they could give us Mayweather McGregor at four in the morning, but they couldn't. They can't give us Lopez Lomachenko. And what about Kell Brook? They couldn't even give us Kell Brook against Crawford. I mean, what's all that about? Eh? That's on. Um, that's on Premier Sports, I think. Yeah. I think that's on Premier Dennis Sports. Didn't Den- Dennis have a deal with them? Dennis, I don't know if Dennis has worked with them now, but uh, Premier Sport, no, it was free sports, wasn't it? Look, see, yeah. this, this is how I look at it. Do you know what to get on them platforms? Is it a skill? Is it still a Sky platform now? Uh, you, you can only access it through a Sky Sports subscription, I think. Well, to get on one of them platforms, it's forty grand, you know. Uh, do you remember when? Frotch fought, Frotch fought somebody in, in, in Super 6. I forgot who, who it were. I think it might have been Kessler. And uh, the platform that they put it on, you have, you have to pay 40 grand to get on them, you know. It's a lot of money. I think I may have fought somebody on one of them platforms, and that was 40, 40 ish grand. So that's before you even start 40 grand. I think Dennis had one. Paul, had Paul one. McCloskey, were not he? Jamie McDonald. When Khan fought Paul McCloskey. That would be it. And um, Hatton as well, when he had his comeback fight against Sinchenko. Oh, you know, yeah, that was a Sky platform. I forgot what the channel were. But you, you, you're 40 grand straight away. That's what, what it costs. And then you've got to recoup that back and then get some buys in to get your profit, haven't you? Just... Not as mate. Just, just this, this Chisora Usyk fight. You've got Usyk here, who's this Olympic gold medalist. He's the first undisputed cruiserweight champion is he since Holyfield, uh, but he's the first ever fight four belter in it. Yeah. Since it's been four belts, I know you count the IBO, but I don't. Um, you know first what? one, I don't count the IBO. I, um, I like so that. he's the he's the first to hold all four belts, but he's running around chasing Chisora. I find that quite embarrassing. Who's chasing Chisora? Usyk, you know, just a few yeah. facts about about this one here, right? Chisora had already had three professional fights by the time Mayweather fought Hatton. That's how long he's been a pro. He'd already had three pro fights by the time Mayweather fought Hatton. That was thirteen years ago. But he'd already got four losses before Usyk had even won his Olympic gold. I just find it absolutely embarrassing. And you've got Tony Bellew predicting a Chisora knockout. He's got nine losses, couldn't even win a British title now. He's been a pro for, what, 14 years. He's got miles on the clock. He's just going to get absolutely battered around that ring. Battered. And we've got to pay £20 for the pleasure. I don't think so. No. It's the worst pay-per-view Sky I've ever done. You reckon, yeah? Hundred percent. There's just no doubt about it for me. It's the worst Frankie pay-per-view Brooke, Sky I've ever done. Kell Brook, Frankie Gavin were probably the worst one they've ever done pay-per-view on. The card was not too bad though, was it? I think. I mean, we had Selby, Selby against Gradovich. Um, there was not Len- Lenares against Kevin Mitchell. Um, John Ryder against Nick Blackwell. There was some good. That, that was good. Card. good you wouldn't even get two of those fights on a card now, let alone bloody all of them together. No. I didn't have that much of a problem with that one at the time, actually. I thought it was quite a decent card. Um, but again, just coming back, I mean, when, when was that? 2016, was that? Or 2015? 15, 16, I think. Well, didn't he win it in 15 or 14? I think he, did he, I think he beat... Porter in 2014, didn't it? August, what, 2014. Fought Golovkin, yeah. I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. Ke- Kevin Busier, Jojo, Dan, Frankie Gavin. Yeah. Reign of Terror. Well, what happened, you see, he got that much stick for those fights that he probably felt that he had to fight Golovkin. Are you with me? For even it up a bit. But he did save the day with, with the arena because Eddie had paid for Arena for the Eubank fight, hadn't he? In Golovkin. So he did he did save the day, but a detrimental to his career, wasn't it, really? He got his eyes smashed up, his eye sockets smashed up, didn't he? 
and I feel, I feel for him, but the fighter employs the manager and he employs the promoter. But the promoter, Eddie Hearn, my fighters are like my family. Oh, we're going to put you in with Golovkin, and Kelly. You, don't worry, you'll, 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 you'll pinch a few quid. But fighters are not like family. Get that out of your head, all you fighters out there. Promoters are not your family. They're like farmers trading in pigs and cows and lamb. Well, Whiskey Nose has said it, hasn't he? Whiskey hey. Nose has said it. Whiskey Nose has said that himself. Slave trader. Why? Tell him why. Slave traders, that's what they are. But all this about when they're writing checks out for you and you're riding high, my fighters are like my family. And you're like that with arm around them at after party. But as the fighter gets to the top and he starts coming down a bit, the promoter then looks for the next meal ticket because that's what they are. Sponsors. That's what it is. That's my opinion of it. And I'm entitled to it. Ponsors. And then this is what you get. You get Kel Brook there. He's obviously gutted. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And I feel for him, but it's a business. And the business side of it is, and I agree with Eddie here, it's four in the morning, and it's not going to do that many views. That's what I think. Who's going to pay for that at four in the morning? The hardcores would, but the casuals would all be asleep, wouldn't they? After a night on the grog. You know, but they're not going to sit up at four in the morning casuals. Eddie will have all the analytics on his computer from all them gimps that work in his office from Beanville Island. He'll have it all in his office. And what will happen is they'll go, well, so many buys came in at this time of night. So many buys came in at that time of night. They came in from this area, this area, this area. And they'll know what areas they're coming in from. So they'll know how many pay-per-views coming from Doncaster and South Yorkshire, Costa Dave Allen. And, and that's why he's getting on slots. But Tom Little might not be getting on slots. And him and Dave Allen are very similar because there might not be that many pay-per-views coming in from his area. Do you see where I'm coming from? It's just like tickets selling tickets. But pay-per-view, they'll know what areas they come from because they have big printouts at Sky and they'll send it to match them and Eddie will study it and he'll go, do you know what, we're going to have him on the pay-per-view again. That's how it works. Fair play to Dave Allen. He's got himself on social media. He's got his son out there. But really, he's a gimmick, isn't he? He's not bothered. He's buying houses up left, right and centre in the area. Good luck to him. But it's a gimmick, isn't it? He's not won a belt yet. But they're going to keep churning him out. He's got a gimme fight this week. He's got a gimme fight, hasn't he? He knocks that guy out cold inside three rounds and the guy's will run. Dave Allen's gatecraft the world scene then. But he's not won an area belt. You see where I'm coming from? That's where we're at now. He's proved, he's booked the trend that you can skip going through the levels and just go bump. Am I right? He's been in with Yoka White. Orters, David Price, uh, and uh, he's fought all them guys there. I'm at Lenroy Thomas. He's fought all them. And how many rounds out of them 51 would you give him? A couple of rounds against Lenroy Thomas in first fight. So he's took all them beatings and good hidings, but he's got his name out there. So he's happy with that. But is this the way forward? Are we talking about his skill set? Or how humble he is on Instagram. What, where, where are we heading here with this? Do you know wrestling characters? When you look at wrestling characters, they're all, they've all got a story, haven't they? Well, Dave's created this story, hasn't he? Look, he's not going to win a world title, is he? But he's created a story, and you can't knock that, can you? He's made it work for himself. Now, there's a lot of boxers. They're cheesed off with it, but that's just the nature of the beast. He's with the right person for that because his dad created all the characters in the snooker scene, didn't he? They had all these names and nicknames for them all, didn't they, in snooker? It were like Dallas with balls, wasn't it? <laughs> Am I right? Like EastEnders with balls. That's, that's just how it were, mate. But the point I want to make is that's where boxing's heading now. It's not about your skill set. It's about he's got a great story. And this week's fight week, Dave Allen will have some up his sleeve this week. IFL, seconds out, boxing social, matchroom boxing, Sky Sports, 
on YouTube. He'll have some up his sleeve this week to get everybody talking because he gets it, doesn't he? He gets it. He doesn't have to flip tables and scream and shout like Tony Bellew and Chisora. He'll, it, they will be inventing something now. He'll be at home like that. I don't know what it'll be, but we've had the gambling, the, the drinking, the homelessness, the no food in fridge, the washing machine broke. We've had all that, haven't we? So I'm looking forward to see, because I want to see what he says, because I know him. I don't know what it's going to be. He might have a mole on his ass that needs taking off. I don't know. I don't know, but good luck. Alan, Alan, Alan seven points out. Alan Mania. It's Alan Mania. Well, now they've got a, you know, they're, they're, they're pulling a guy in it now and he looks good on paper of 19 or 19 KOs. So they can slick that in at, for chief support, no problem. Get that in there at chief support. I mean, fuck, you know. He, he, was, on, he was on a chief support last year, weren't he, as well, I think. Dave Allen. With France. Was that, that was a pay-per-view chief support, was it not? Oh, the prize, no, the headline on a non-pay-per-view on that, didn't they? Yeah. Were they on the chief support? Well, that's good, isn't it? If you can get on pay-per-view and get a few quid, well, that's good. But we know he's not going to win a world title. Dave knows he's not going to win one. But just thinking... When Eddie Hearn's done with him, he'll, what he'll do, he'll just... He'll go out on the beach and brass himself off to Frank Warren and let his fighters run through him. The bar, Joyce, go, and they'll all run through him, won't they? And then when he's got nowhere to go, he'll count all his money and laugh at everybody and say, I caught the game. And good luck to him. Well, if he's a, if he'll be on crutches by the time he's 14. He won't be able to talk. I hope not. But like I said, you're only getting punched in the head like that. You want to get paid, don't you? And there's been times where he hasn't really been paid, has he? He didn't get paid for autos. Billy White fight, he didn't get good money for them fights. Joker, and you know, so he deserves he deserves a bit of luck, doesn't he? Just how it goes, isn't it? So anyway, let's just look ahead to the schedule for the rest of the year anyway and try and try and put a positive spin on it. Um we had we did have some decent positive news about three weeks ago, and that was that Dubois against Joyce was gonna be on regular BT and not on pay-per-view. Now I've put a lot of thought into this and at the time, I was absolutely over the moon. But this is where it's come to as a boxing fan now. We've got a British title fight, which we're pleased to be as a non-pay-per-view fight. But when you really strip it back, it's not a pay-per-view fight anyway. And, and then when you wedge it in between White Povetkin 2, Tyson Fu- the week before, Tyson Fury the week after, and then Joshua the week after that, they could never have run that as a pay-per-view anyway. So why not try and grab some positive publicity off it, announce it nice and early, and make out that we're doing it for the fans? But if those three fights weren't happening in such a close period of time, they'd have been keeping that on pay-per-view, no problem. It's just that they were backed into a corner, and with and with all those fights around it, they would have done terrible numbers on pay-per-view. So they're probably getting more money out of it through advertising on regular BT. And I can guarantee that some of the purse money will be subsidised from the Tyson Fury pay-per-view the week after. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Tyson Fury, who's he going to fight? If Dave Allen beats... What's he called? Lovejoy. Chris Lovejoy. If he beats him, Dave Allen, right? this 25-stone undefeated Iceman, if he beats him, he'll be calling out Tyson Fury. He'll be saying, well, I'm world ranked with WBA. Get me ranked with WBC now. The WBC will do what they're told because it's Tyson Fury. Tyson will get a voluntary then against Dave Allen. And everybody will buy into it that they used to spar together 500 rounds and he was trained by Peter and Tyson was trained by Peter. The scripts are already being wrote, mate. You think I'm joking? Watch the space in next seven days. Is it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Monday today, isn't it? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, wherever that. Another five days, watch this space. Fury Allen. Teacher against pupil. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher against pupil. Oh my God. I can't, you know what? It's been a funny old year, Porky. But not even Bricktop could pull that one off. 
Brick top. Well, Brick top. He put Ricky Burns in with Nicky Cook for a world title fight, didn't he? <laughs> he got Nicky Cook off at beach in Tenerife, slipped him in at number uh, number eleven with WBO, and and and, and, and it, it, they had to carry him to the ring. His back were broke. And they've got him in the ring, and then he collapsed, didn't he? Messed around with his back. If That's he could like... do that on a world title fight and end up falling out with Sky over it, because I think that was his undoing that Sky had been told. Uh, but if he can do that, you could put Dave Allen, who's already ranked number 15 with one governing body. You could you could put Dave Allen in with Fury, why not? Listen, it's the wild, wild west. They've just slipped Martin Murray into the top 15, haven't they? Somebody slipped Lovejoy into the top 15. And then it needs somebody to take that ranking. Martin's been slipped in at number 12. He ain't even been fighting the game before this year, but because he's in the top 15 at number 12, it's a voluntary for Billy's defence. Am I right? Well, Hill, Hill's, Hill, Hill's ship Barker off, didn't he? Who'd only got one hip. Obviously, Bricktop put Nicky Cook in there, who got a crooked back. Yeah. So, like you say, anything is possible, but I just could not see. I could not see Fury Allen. I just could not see. It. No. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. No, I can't. It would, but uh, <laughs> how funny would that be to Dillian White? I can see it happening. I can see that happening. I can see it happening. Dave's not got a deal with match. He could go to BT Sport anytime he wants. Look, I can see it happening. And it will happen. If Dave's doing pay-per-view buys on the analytics that Eddie Hearn looks at in his office in this area, and they'll say, well, Dave Allen's doing all that. It might not be Dave Allen. They might just be buying fights anyway. But when they put Dave on cards in the middle of the week on a pay-per-view, they might notice that the numbers go up. Because these people are experts. They're numbers men. That's how it gets your money. And don't forget, accountant by name, accountant by nature. And they'll know. So if Dave's putting bums on seats, Frank Warren will know because he knows what Eddie's doing. He'll take the lead off Eddie. He'll say, we'll get Dave Allen, we'll get Tyson. And if they do a pay-per-view and it does all right, the money from it will pay for the Bois Joyce because that's not pay-per-view. For example... Why is Martin Murray fighting for a world title with WBO? Well, he's been slipped in there. So that means that Eddie Earn wants to keep the WBO sweet. But Frank's had WBO sweet for years. So if Eddie's keeping WBO sweet with Martin Murray against Saunders and a Coley against that other guy for WBO, it means that when he needs a favour with Usek screaming, I want my mandatory against Joshua. Do, 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 Eddie can have a word with WBO and say, get Usek, just to, or, or, Usek to all these horses while we fight Fury twice and tell him he'll get his shot down the line. We'll give him a few quid. That's how it works. But what I'd have done, if I were a promoter, I'd have said, and it was Dennis doing it, I said, Dennis, why do you want to be paying sanctioning fees for WBO for, for Martin Murray Saunders? Just fight without the belt on the line. Because we're in a pandemic and there's no gate. Why waste money on sanctioning fees when there's no gate? It's because down the line they want favours. You see where I'm coming from? It's not a business decision, is it? Well, I think, I think the, uh, the WBC rankings for November will be released next week. Just keep a keen eye on them, WBC <laughs> top 15. Anyone that sort of gets slipped in there, I think that's a bit of an I indicator. It, that'll be your indicator. To do this, what, what I do and what we do, I mean, what, we don't miss out, do we? When you see people slipped into rankings, I always think, oh, natural fighter getting slipped into rankings here. And then you hear a fight announced, you know, a few weeks later, you think, Phew. that fight has told, get into camp, we're not going to announce it for a month. But well, everybody was saying it was going to be Murray a month ago. Look, if Martin Murray and Saunders can get a few quid, good luck to them. It's a pandemic. Saunders needs a fight this year, doesn't it? But the moral of the story is this. They're both inactive. So why couldn't they just do it without the belt online? It's a terrible fight for me. I mean, welcome to the big league was the tweet when he signed for him last July. Welcome to the big league. Who said that? Fought... Hills. Eddie Hills. We, Eddie, we, Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah. Um, 
yet all he's done is slap him on a YouTuber's undercard and fed him Martin Murray. Now, there was a big thing that Saunders moved away from Bricktop because he couldn't secure him the Callum Smith unification fight. But he's moved to Hills and Hills could have made him big fights, but he hasn't. Canelo's not come off. Callum Smith's not come off. So what? So is, is Saunders really pushing him that hard? Is he really that bothered? It doesn't seem like that to me. Callum Smith's fought John Ryder in 18 months. Yeah. Uh, why, why not stick them in together? Or, or why, why hasn't John Ryder got the Billy Joe Saunders fight? Will Callum Smith and Beefy Smith retire this year? Well, that's what Gallagher's saying, isn't he? He says if Beefy Smith don't get out before the year, he's talking about retirement. Joe Gallagher. Well, who Callum. cares, really? Who cares? If Callum Smith retired tomorrow, would anyone even notice? No, but Joe Gallagher's trying to play poker with Eddie Hearn, but Eddie's got an ace up his sleeve. And do you know what that is? Eddie knows that Joe Gallagher can't work with Frank Warren. So Eddie's the only game in town, isn't he? So Eddie's got Joe where he wants him. And when he puts a low ball offer out to his fighters and Joe Gallagher comes on social media, ranting and raving, screaming and shouting... And Caldwell backing him up. Yeah, I'm backing Joe with that. And blah, blah. not Caldwell, uh, Fearon. Only because Sky have let Fearon gone, he's backing Joe up. Point I want to make is Joe's taking the bait, but he's still got nowhere to go, has he? He's, Ed is the only game in town for Joe Gallagher. He's not like a Steve Wood who can work with both, is he? Company man Steve Wood. Well, it is. Joe can only work with Eddie, can he? And that's why Joe's got his promoter's licence now, isn't he? He wants to put his own stuff on. Well, he's in a bit of a tight spot now, Joe Gallagher, with Callum, Callum Johnson, Natasha Jonas and Callum Smith, because, and Beefy Smith, because they can only work with Eddie. And if Eddie's offering them crap money, they're all snookered. Beefy's had millions out of the game, and so has Callum Smith. They've had big money, them two. They're not going to want to fight for chump change, are they? But it's quite funny that... why. Beefy can moan all he wants, but why hasn't he gone on, why, gone and fought on an MTK show then? Because probably because he's had good money, hasn't he, on match room. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, I think we've covered quite a lot there anyway. Um, pretty much all the points I've got jotted down, all the stuff I wanted to get off my chest. So I just think the last thing to cover is I want to ask you a certain question, Mr. Porkster. Mickey Theo against John Fury. Where are we at? Uh, well, where we were at, it was down for 28 for me, wasn't it? And John Fury pulled plug on it and then decided to come out and say, go to this gym, go to a gym tomorrow morning and fight me there. Or if you, and if you don't turn up, it's off altogether. So I think John Fury's looked for a way out. If I'm wrong, John Fury's welcome on in. He can come and explain himself. Or what's John Fury going to do if, the fight gets rearranged and uh, uh, we, we, we have venue and, and streaming channels and, and a referee and, and people backing it and sponsoring it and all that and a contract's put in front of John Fury's nose. Is he going to sign it? I don't know. That could be happening behind the scenes. We'll have to wait and see. But I think that it's wrong for somebody to come out and say, yeah, I'll fight you, I'll tear you limb from limb. I'm the best, I'm John Fury. Well, if John Fury's saying all that, and then the, the training towards this date, 28th of May, and then he comes up, and then he pulls plug on it, and then not long after, comes out and says, meet me at this gym tomorrow, just turn up. Or, and if you don't turn up, we're not, we're not going to fight if, if that happened, you can't go, you can't go for the way out now after you've shot your mouth off, can you? They've got to fight, both of them. Pair of them have got to get at it. And I think that Mickey Theo wants to fight with him. In fact, I know he does. He's training for it. Um, there's a lot going off behind the scenes. And John Fury is either going to have to put up or go into Aiden. Now, he's in Aiden at the moment, isn't he? Well, he ain't come out, has he? Now, the people can keep abusing me all they want. Emailing me, leaving daft comments. Water for ducks back up, sending me videos with masks on. What's all that about? Sending threatening videos, but they're wearing a mask. Look, point I want to make is this they've got a fight. It's as simple as that.
John Fury says he's a fighting man. Well, fight. Fight. Mickey says he's a fighting man. Fight. They're going to fight. So, well, I think John will fight. I think he'll have to do because if not, it'll follow him around, won't it? You can't play the social media game or the media game and turn it on and off like a tap when you want. We all know that. I know that. You know that. And John Fury knows that. The Spartan. So, like a Spartan. I ain't got a problem with John Fury, but after all the shouting and bawling that he's done, you can't just turn up, turn up, come out and say, meet me at that gym tomorrow. And if you don't turn up, well, it's off now. That's it. I've put it to bed. You can't do that. And all these people saying that John Fury is a great fighting man and all that, they've never even seen him fight. There's only one bit of footage of him fighting, and that's the Malpass DVD. And he stopped it them selling any more of it. So none of them have seen John Fury have a fight. All these people that keep sending threats. None of them. But we haven't seen Mickey fight, have we? We've seen him sparring that. But... So look, let them fight. And then they'll probably be mates after. They've both got big egos. They'll be pals after, but let them fight. Mickey wants to fight him, so why not? And it's all good, it's all good, isn't it? And then it can be put to bed, they can move on, can't they? They'll be a winner and they'll be a loser. Who knows? They might even get it as a draw, so there's no fighting after. But it's got to happen. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a draw, repeat or revenge? Repeat or intense beat. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> well, good luck to both of them. Good luck to both of them, but we're going to see, aren't we? I think that Tyson will probably sit his dad down soon after Christmas as well. Put it to bed, dad, now, and they'll probably fight. So let's hope so. So, all right. Wait there, thanks for coming on, Dale. I've got loads to do now. I've got to go up bank and pay his check in and mess about. And I'm chasing up a dentist at the moment. So I'm having, I mean, I'm done, aren't I? But problem is, it's. Uh, I don't want to go, I want to go abroad and go again because it's cheaper than England, isn't it? But it's, if you get stuck out there, you can't get back. So it might be after <laughs> Christmas now, but I'm just, uh, I had a quote in England. I mean, what sort of country are we now? We're like Monaco, aren't we, for everything, aren't we? Petrol, fags, booze, dentists, it's a joke, isn't it? But it is what it isn't. Oh, you well, Dale. How are you, how are you coping with your new car? Yeah, I love it, mate, ah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Next have time been, I come... Have you been burning up the village? Next time I come see you, mate, I'll, uh, I'll smoke you. Smoke me? All right. <laughs> All right, my friend. You take care. And you. Cheers, see you later. Right then, that was uh, a lock. That was Dale Nichols uh, from Midlands. Uh, I enjoyed having Dale on. He's a good guy. Uh, he does all helmets now. All votes go straight to Dale now because. No, they're not. I ain't got enough hours in day. Uh, so he's come on board, doing it for no time, the goodness of his heart. So that's good, isn't it? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. And if you do like the video, share it with your pals on WhatsApp. If you don't like the video, well, there's not a lot I can do. And I'm not everybody's cup of tea, am I? I'm a bit like Marmite. I would like to tell it straight on here. Uh, we give an opinion if some people don't like it I apologise but I can't keep you all sweet, you know people are fickle in boxing industry uh, we've given an opinion on a few things today and you know, I hope you like the opinion we've given All right, but like I said, keep them comments coming, good or bad alright uh, if you get too personal, camera on the spot here but I don't mind a bit of banter uh, you've got to remember that I'm putting myself in front of a camera here. Other channels don't do this. They're behind the camera. We know, we know what about that man. He's a, he's a good boxing knowledge guy, but sporting icons, they're behind the camera, aren't they? Right? I'm in front of the camera. But a lot of you people who leave comments, uh, 
the vile ones. Why don't you set, instead of leaving a comment, why don't you send a link on a video that you've done and let me see a video of you saying them words without a mask on. Let's see what you look like and let's see who you are. All right, instead of, I, I, instead of hide, hiding behind, instead of hiding behind the camera, because that's what it is, isn't it? Hiding, hiding behind it. Cowards, off with their heads. So, let me post a birthday card here today. Pull up. That's nice, that, isn't it? That's been a porky, uh, a porky follower. So, only had one post of no here. <laughs> Don't want that popular, am I? So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. That's AJ Obson's business in Sheffield. Shout out to South Yorkshire Packaging. That's his place. Shout out to them at Lacoste. I still want me Woolly Hearts, but thank you for the trainers. And shout out to Watchfinder. Bump Emily at Watchfinder. Thank you very much. I think that's about it. We'll get this up now. We'll uh, I'll get Cameron to do me a, thumb, a thumbnail. And then I'll get and pay some bills. And I might come back and do a bit of chest and tricep. I might try. I might try a Lee Priest tricep workout. Because he is the man for triceps, Lee Priest. All right? Peace out. Don't have nightmares.